Hi, Lori here again from Mountain Mud Pottery. It's a beautiful morning here in the mountains. Fresh snow, beautiful sunrise, beautiful sun out there right now. Today's demonstration, I'm going to show you how to throw a bowl on the wheel. I'll start by doing a two pound bowl and describe what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. And then I'll do a larger bowl, just showing it to you without any instruction. So I'll get started by wetting my bat and I throw bowls and plates on a bat just because you cannot possibly take a bowl off the wheel head without distorting it. So I start off by wetting the, wetting the bat, taking my piece and slamming it down as close to the middle as possible. And then as with everything I'd start with, I do a little chop on it just to make sure it's going to adhere to the bat or the wheel head. And then I run a dry finger on the bottom, again to give it more success on staying on the wheel head or the bat. Now I'm gonna start by getting my hands wet. I'm going to be lubricating it with water but not soaking it with water. So I'm going to cone up and down a few times and what this does is aligns the platelets of the clay, helps get rid of any air bubbles that may still be in there. This is a piece of reclaimed clay, so it may have a bit more air bubble in it. And gets the clay ready to open up. It also is the biggest part of centering. And centering is the most important thing to have ready when you are throwing anything on the wheel. If it's not centered, it won't open properly, it'll be uneven, and it just won't work for you. You know it's centered when it's not wobbling around. So this piece is centered. I'm just going to bring it down now a little bit more to get it ready to open up. Everything I do, I follow down right to the wheel head or the bat. So now it is ready to open. So I flatten the top with that part of my hand. And I'm going to open using my middle finger. I find the center, the very center of the piece and it feels quite still and quiet right there. That's why I know it's the center. And I'm just gonna push my fingers down, my middle finger supported with my other fingers. And then I'm just going to pull straight towards me. and open it up. Now, next I'm going to compress the bottom. And by compressing, I mean just going back and forth. This makes the bottom flatter and also helps eliminate any cracking that may happen on the bottom. And then I'm just going to color the piece in. Coloring in is just bringing it back into that form that I want to keep it in. I want to keep it in kind of a cone shape form until I'm ready to do any shaping. So I cone it in and then I'm going to be adding water and taking water off. So I'm adding a little bit of water and letting it slide down both sides. I make an indent on the outside with my finger to show a reference point of where to pull up. Next part is starting to pull the walls up, which is also thinning the walls. And the first motion I do is a claw. So I've got my thumb on the outside, these fingers on the inside, supporting with my sponge on the right hand side. I'm just going to claw and I'll continue doing this the same thing over and over again until 
I have the walls as thin as I want them to be. So again, I am I'm using more pressure on my outside hand where the sponge is, easing up in the pressure as I come near the top because the bottom is still about that thick. The top is about that thick. It's always much more difficult to get the weight, the thickness off the bottom, which is why I always do this kind of an indent on the bottom to give my, myself a reference point to start pulling from. One more pull should do it, and then I'll start shaping it as a bowl. So now I'm going to start pulling it outwards a little bit. So now my inside hand is kind of pulling towards my outside hand. And I always want to pull right to the very top. Gently let go and always compress the rim to keep it at a stable thickness and also so it doesn't get jagged. I'm always going to be taking the water out. You don't want water to pool in there because that will weaken it and also possibly create any cracks that you definitely don't want. So now it's about that thick right here in the bottom. So now I want it to be more an open bowl shape. So I'm gonna start pulling more like this with my inside hand, supporting with my outside hand. I can feel a little air bubble on the top of the rim. Because this is reclaimed clay, it is more prone to air bubbles. So it's right in the very top, so I am going to just cut the top off. So I wet my fingers and I wet my pin tool. I'm holding the rim with my index finger and my thumb on this side. And I'm holding the pin tool like this. And then I fairly quickly put it in right till it meets my finger and then I rip it off and then that's much better. So there you have a small bowl shape. And then what I do from there is that this is my favorite round tool for this. So now I want to support the outside of the bowl rim with my hand this way and quite wet so it doesn't stick. And then I am going to kind of make a little bit of a rim there and then I'm going to kind of push the clay near the bottom to make a nice round shape. And then come back up. So there you have a nice little two pound bowl. I would then take my wooden tool and cut off this thickness. I leave a bit of thickness on the bowl to support the weight of the bowl. It's more important in bigger pieces, but it also helps a lot in this. So I'm just going to cut off the excess. And this tends to want to stick to the piece when you try to take it off like this. So what I do is I get a little bit of water and put it in the trough there and then that eliminates the sticking part. So then this, I would just cut off the wheel with my wire tool. So very slowly, with the wire held taut between your fingers, the wheel spinning slowly, and then I just undercut it like that, bring the wire towards me, and then it's undercut. 
Then I would just take the bat off the wheel and put it over on my drying cupboard. So with this shape, you cannot take it off the wheel head without using a bat. Now I'm going to be doing a four pound bowl. Same kind of idea, but I, I'll just do it and not, uh, not explain. Thanks for watching the video on how to throw bowls. Stay tuned for the next step, which is going to be trimming the bowl. It has to be leather hard, and I'll show you how to do a foot ring on a bowl and also a mock foot. So stay tuned, and thanks for watching.